I'm Ellie and I was just daydreaming about idols and magical girls, two of my favorite things in the entire world. And the costume we're working on today happens to combine both of those things into one super duper sparkly, really, really pink and awesomely cute costume. I am so excited to get started on it. So today we are going to be working on Lucia from Mermaid Melody. Mermaid Melody is a series from the early 2000s. It follows a mermaid princess whose name is Lucia. She goes to land to find her lost pearl and her long lost love. And there she finds that the oceans are in danger and she must sing and dance to protect the world. Yes, it's just as crazy as it sounds, but it's also really, really cute and is just really fun to watch. Plus it has some amazing songs in it. Like I said, we're going to be working on Lucia. We're going to be working on her second outfit or her pure form, which has a lot more details and more frilly things to play with. But as you can see, Lucia's design is actually pretty flat. There's a lot going on, but there's not necessarily a lot of dynamic fabrics or things that just sparkle or shine or anything like that. So we are going to be taking some inspiration from Muse's final live where they took their original outfits and added so much sparkle that I'm sure they could be seen from the moon. And we are going to do the same thing for Lucia. I'm really excited to play around with some different materials and use all sorts of different sparkly things on this costume. I can't wait to get started and I hope you'll join us. Let's go. Lucia's outfit is comprised of a light pink skirt with a dark pink overskirt, a princess seam bodice with lots of ruffles, some seashell pink piping trim stuff, as well as gloves and boots with large ruffles and long flowing blonde hair. Today we are going to get started on her skirt. After a bit of thinking, I decided that the skirt is going to be in two pieces. There is going to be the light pink underskirt and then the dark pink skirt, which is going to be attached to the bodice, but we'll be going over it today. So unfortunately, I did lose a lot of my footage while working on the light pink underskirt, but it's very, very simple and I will walk you through the steps that I did pretty quickly. So we started with a light pink crepe satin that we cut into a circle skirt as our base skirt. On top of that, we have glitter netting, which is absolutely beautiful. It's a pain to work with, but if you are going to be working with some sort of glitter netting, I do suggest making sure it is a netting, not a tool. A tool is going to lose a lot more glitter, but thankfully the glitter stayed on this netting really, really well. We're going to cut three circle skirts from our netting, and then we're going to stitch those together to create one massive glittery skirt. Once those have been stitched together, you can go ahead and run two basting stitches along the waist, and we'll use those to gather the skirts so they're gonna fit into our waistband. For the pink underskirt, we're going to start by creating a narrow hem all the way along the hem of our skirt. A narrow hem is basically a French hem, it's a double fold hem that leaves no open seams and it looks really nice. But what's so great about a narrow hem is that it works wonderfully on circle skirts and doesn't get all rumply. Once the hem of your skirt is in place, we're going to attach the tulle skirt to the underskirt. And we're just gonna attach those at the waist. Once those have been put together, it's time to attach our zipper. This is going to be going in the center back and I'm using an invisible zipper for mine, though you're welcome to use any sort of zipper that you'd like. I'm going to attach the left side and then the right side to both the tool and the lining material. Once your zipper is in place, we're going to finish off that seam with a straight stitch, and then I'm going to fold over any excess material and line stitch that to the lining, just to make sure we don't have any open seams. This is a really, really nice finishing touch. With your skirt put together, it's time to attach a waistband. This is a very basic waistband. We're just going to attach it to the front, fold it over, stitch in the ditch, add a hook and bar, and call it good. So I know we kind of blasted through that. I'm so sorry that I lost the footage. I've been having some issues with that. It's all fine. I haven't figured out. The problem is fixed, and I have footage for the rest of this project. So we're going to move on to this overskirt. This is one of the first parts that I decided to really, really play around with. 
Obviously, Lucia's base skirt doesn't have tulle on it, but that's not too far of a stretch. But for her overskirt, I decided to make it entirely of sequined material. I wanted to do this so it would add a bit of body to the skirt, and it also just looks really, really cool. I plan to be using this costume in a contest where I'll be dancing on stage, so I want it to move and flow and sparkle like I were a real idol. So the first thing we're going to be doing is creating the pattern for this skirt. It is a high-low circle skirt with pleats at the waist. So we need to make sure that we have enough room in our waist for the pleats. Since they aren't entire full pleats, they're kind of half pleats, I'm only doing two times as much of my radius in my waist. And then I also did some measuring to figure out how long I wanted the rest of the skirt to be. Once I have my pattern figured out, I'm going to cut this out of my sequin material. Very important thing to note, if you are working with sequin material, don't use your good scissors. You're basically cutting through plastic and that is so bad for your scissors. As you can see, I am using a pair of like old kitchen scissors because they're the only thing I have that I don't really care about and that can cut through all these sequins. Once we've cut it out of our sequin material, I'm also going to cut our skirt out of a satin that I'm going to be using to line the skirt. You want something that's pretty close to the same color as your sequins, but it doesn't have to be exact. All right, so now this is the really, really tedious part. We are going to go around our sequin material and take about a quarter to a half inch of sequins off. I know, I sound crazy, but we are going to go by hand and hand pick off all these sequins. Now, you might be saying, oh my gosh, Ellie, why in the world are you doing this? You're insane. That's way too much work. So the answer is yes to all of those questions, but this is actually an important step. If you were to just leave all the sequins on and stitch right through them, you'd be stitching through sequins, which is bad for your machine. But more importantly, when you then fold open your fabric, you're gonna get sequins that are just kind of pointing straight up because it's plastic, it doesn't bend well. It's just gonna be and that does not look that good. So we are going to be picking all those out of our seams. So when we unfold our fabric, we're going to get a nice flat seam. And then I'm also holding on to the sequins. So if I need to, I can go back in and fill up any holes that there might've been from where I picked off too many sequins. Alrighty, so we have got all the sequins taken off of our seam allowance. And now we get to attach our skirt to our lining. To do this, I'm going to lay out my lining on the floor as neatly as possible and then I'm going to put the sequins on top of it. You wanna make sure that you have let your material stretch out. When you make a circle skirt, the bias is at different points in the material, and it's going to stretch out in different ways. So you wanna make sure to let it hang at least for 24 hours before you put the lining into it. All right, so we have everything laid out, and now I'm going to very carefully go around the entire skirt and pin it together. If I need to make any adjustments or pick off more sequins, now is the time that I do that. And then I can go around and stitch our materials together using a simple straight stitch. Once they're stitched together, I'm gonna trim off any excess material, flip it inside out, and give it a nice pressing. Whoa, 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 I know, pressing sequins. It's okay. We're gonna use a presser cloth and you're not gonna set your iron too high. It's not gonna melt, it's okay. You can iron almost anything as long as you don't set your iron too hot and you have a presser cloth. So I'm going around this entire hem, ironing it out so it's nice and flat. Once it's flat, we are able to now pleat our skirt and put it on our dress form. So using my dress form, I'm gonna go through and put the pleats where I think I want them and adjust as necessary. Once I have the pleats where I like them, I'm going to pin them in place and run a nice straight stitch so that way they stay there. So now we have both of our skirts together. Like I said, I'm going to be attaching the sparkly overskirt in the inside of the bodice. So I am not going to be putting a waistband or attaching it to our skirt. I'm just gonna be leaving it raw for now. I hope you guys like the look of this costume so far. I'm absolutely in love with it. It's so sparkly and fun. The skirt is amazing to dance in and I can totally see myself wearing it to a party or like a formal event or something because it's just so much fun. And this overskirt is so nice. It has such a nice drape and it really flows super fun when you're dancing around in it. I hope you guys really like this series. I am a huge fan of classic magical girls 
and I think Lucia fits that bill perfectly. Next time we're going to be focusing on the bodice, which is a bit of a doozy, so make sure you strap in your boots and everything like that. <laughs> All right, you guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I always appreciate it. If you could leave a like, a comment, subscribe, share with your friends, anything like that, it really does help me out. As always, you guys, keep sewing, stay positive, and have fun! Awesome. I will see you all next time.